With the rising cost of healthcare in America, many are seeking alternatives such as natural medicine and acupuncture and Qigong. Qigong originated in China. It's proven to be an effective therapy of many ailments, and it's been practiced for thousands of years by millions of people worldwide. Joining me today is Qigong Grandmaster Dr. Effie Chow. American presidents and dignitaries have honored Dr. Effie Chow for her humanitarian work and her ability to spread the healing message of Qigong around the world. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. Let's Thank mind you for having well. me. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you could share with us the what Qigong means to you, what is your, your experience of Qigong? Well, Qi means breath or the vital life. And Gong means how you manipulate it or cultivate it and utilize it to its best advantage. So Qi is oxygen and it's breath. And so if we don't breathe, what are we? Dead. Dead, <laughs> yes. exactly. Yes. And if you have a low level of breath and oxygen, then you have low level health. Of oxygen, yes. Yes, and you become dis-ease. And then if you have nothing to cope with that, then it becomes a disease. And so, but Qigong is really the basic theoretical tenet of traditional Chinese medicine. It's a basis of the theory of the balance of energy. And we are all energy, everything. The houses, the floors that we walk on, the chairs, everything, not just animals and plants and humans, but everything is oxygen in it. And so therefore, we relate with everything, not just with the what we call the living energy. And quantum physics talk about this that we are and we are everything and that we are connected with everything and so if in quantum physics they said if you look at a mass there's no mass it is a connection of smaller masses then when you look at the smaller mass it's connections again of smaller mass until ultimately there's nothing but connections mm. and so that's the energy concept that we see. and in science we talk about kinetic energy. In, do you remember in high school? Yes, yes. Kinetic yes. energy, and everything is kinetic energy, and that you what cannot is that? That destroy. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot destroy kinetic energy. So there's no such a thing as death. It's a transformation. And kinetic, so, kinetic energy is what you can what connects things, right? It's the energy. Kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. K i n e t i c s. And everything is kinetic energy. So it's like what we're saying, everything is qi. Mm -hmm. It's a Chinese word for energy. And that the very life is energy, the vital life force. And if you don't have that vital life force or the oxygen, the breath, then there is nothing. And so it's the basis of traditional Chinese medicine, qigong. And people here in the West have interpreted it as an exercise and a meditation. Ah. And I yes. really want to get rid of that image because Qigong is a way of life. Mm. And so therefore, what do you get up and want to do? That's a decision you have to make. Uh, the politics that's happening, it is Qi. And the financial world that is having its economic problem, that is Qi. So you look at everything as Qi. Everything, everything is, is energy. Qi is mm -hmm. energy. And so the how it's balanced mm -hmm. then is whether it's healthy, wealthy, or not. So when it's out of balance, take something, for example, as politics, can or even a mass in the body of yes. a cancerous mass. Exactly. They're the same thing. So you can start to work with the energy of each one of those things, yes. anything. Yes, See, we talk about qi, but then there's a jing energy, which is a sensual energy from the kidney. And the qi is the overall energetics. And then there is many descriptions of qi. There's a psychic qi, there's a qi of finances, there's a qi of love and relationship, there's uh, anything you can say, or the qi of the spoken word. It affects you in different ways. And you could go on that everything has its own parameter of that energy. So therefore, when you find there's an imbalance, then it is up to the skill of the individual to 
seek and see what is that imbalance. And how you can restore it back to exactly. balance. Exactly, rebalance it. So therefore, there is nothing that cannot be rebalanced. Amazing. Isn't it? So you look at life as everything can be rebalanced, health. Yes. Everything. Everything. And the other thing that is helpful is that everybody think about rebalance as, well, if I have cancer, well, I must not have cancer before I'm happy that I must be healed of cancer. Mm. But you need to be happy where you are and get the most out of life. Even with the cancer. Even with the cancer, and particularly with the cancer, or heart disease, or arthritis, or- Or financial cold, devastation, or financial whatever. Financial difficulty. Mm. Politics. And, yes, and natural disasters, mm. you know, which you've had a lot of recently, mm -hmm. and the violence that goes on. Mm -hmm. There is a remedy for all of that. And so it's our expertise that say which energy centers need to be rebalanced. Okay. Okay. And with the heart to heal diseases, like we have a fight for cancer, fight against heart right. disease, fight against diabetes. Well, you can't fight it and win because if you fight something, they'll fight you back even worse. The resistance grows stronger. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So therefore, and people have said, how can you love your cancer? I said, you can. And when people have gotten over that, they suddenly find they're open to a whole different world. Isn't that what Tai Chi is, is working with the flow the of flow energy? The flow of the Chi. Flow and that's the a Taoist principle, like go with the flow. And then the empty forest, which is like the stem cell in the Western medicine. Yes. That is a, uh, is a nondescript cell that can go to anywhere to help. Same with this empty force, it's there. And we need to learn how to use this empty force mm -hmm. for whatever it is that we want. And it isn't only always dealing with the problem. When you're well, oh. you want to be, quote, weller. Mm -hmm. More well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like even the Olympic athletes, I work a lot with them. I work with the symphony, I work with the opera, and so forth. Peak performance and levels. And they're all peak performance mm -hmm. level. And yet they want to be better. Yes. And so we help them to get better. So it's all and levels. we have a lot from, of examples, yes. From health to anything in the world, and even the peak performance levels. So when you're working with this energy, do you have to have intention when you're working with the energy? What specifically do you need to hold in order to change that energy? Well, you asked a really good question because we think that we have to have intention when we're faced with a problem okay. or we're faced with a specific thing we want. But your life should be a life of intention. Oh, You understand? Yes, yes. And we ask a lot of people and say, what do you see yourself doing in five years or 10, 20 years? Uh, what is your goal? What is your passion? Uh, well, no, I haven't thought about it. And so everybody just gets up, go to work, and eat, and come home, and watch television, or have some interaction, go to bed, get up, and then Do I the same thing created over. a very boring life. And I'm faced with all these really magnificent uh, achievers. And so natural life, normal life, what they call normal life, is very boring. Uh huh. <laughs> but a life with intention all the time. All the time. Is it becomes a, life a habit. Mm -hmm. You can't just turn on your mm -hmm. energy when you're faced yes. with a cancer case that, oh, I really got to get my chi now. So your exercise and meditation is very important. Your exercise or your positive thinking is very important. And your exercise of high level of expectations and not be dragged down by the negatives in our society. And there's lots of negatives. Yes, there are. And I yes. think you need to have even more of these tools under your exactly. belt in today's day and age. Now, do you have specific techniques about posture or about energy that we can use? You bet. Okay, good. <laughs> I know, you're a grandmaster, so I would hope. <laughs> yes, you have uh -huh. a few tricks up usually. Yep, yeah, I don't like to think of them as techniques. Okay. I like to think of them as skills within an entire system of operation. 
Okay. And this is why a lot of us now in the complementary medicine has a problem because they come and take this technique, come and take that technique, come and take that technique. Yeah. And then some of them will have taken 20 or 25 different things. And they said, but I can't make it work. Oh. That's because you're just like taking a little bit of everything and you still have a little bit, nothing. So you have to take a system and go into depth and learn the depth and it takes a lot more work and seems like, well, if I take one system, it's so boring. So the key now for people is I like, take as many as you can from all different things. And I think that gives them something, but it gives them nothing. It dilutes it a little. Yes. It dilutes them, totally. Yes. So you just got the same little bit out of everything. You don't go into depth. So your philosophy is going into depth with one thing, Give it. which is what? Well, anyone, I mean, of course, Chow Qigong is what I've developed. And, and has been getting all these miracles and everything. But however, any system, and I promote a lot of other Qigong masters and healers, uh, Ayurveda and, and uh, uh, the African voodoos and South American wow. you know, uh, healers uh, and et cetera. But you need to set your goal on something that has helped you and then study it in depth. Give it at least three months that you concentrate, if not six months. And then it doesn't mean you can't do anything else, but you have to dedicate. Your priority is this system and really get into okay. the depth so that you can get the, the core of that, of the healing system. So when you, you were diagnosed with an illness not so long ago. Yes. If you could tell us about that and how you use this simple, not simple technique, but you practiced over and over and over again this one technique that helped you. Yeah, my system. Okay. Not a technique. Sorry, <laughs> your system, thank you, yes, yes. yes. And, well, I was diagnosed with, uh, with a hip problem, you mm -hmm. know, uh, the bone, uh, uh, arthritic and all that. And since then, it has my, uh, the socket has moved up three inches. So that means my feet is like three inches, two inches shorter, you mm -hmm. know. So I could be walking with a limp, but I have, with practicing the exercise and my mind, I said it that I'm going to walk this way. I feel that I'm walking straight instead of limping like this, mm -hmm. you know. And so you have to create it in your mind first, just like skiing. I'm a word winner in most of the sports that I participate in. Wow. Uh, snow skiing and uh, you know uh, tennis and ping pong, all of that. And so you have to have that vision of what it feels like. So when you go skiing, you in bed you go down, up, down, you know, over the moguls uh -huh. and all that. And you feel your body go that way. So in healing, it's the same way. You feel what it's like to be perfect. And then in your mind, you feel what it's it is to be perfect. To be whole. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And if you want to move smoothly, in your mind you have to see and feel yourself moving like this instead of like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? The feeling is a very important part. Is it's you, that's the seems, most important part. It seems part. like yes. it is, the way you're saying yeah. it. And then you asked me about my condition. Yes. So that um, they felt I should have an operation, but I, I've had adversity to medicine, mm. which created a real big problem for me in that, in that I was wheelchair bound, you know, with that, oh. by losing my agent. And I had surgery uh, near my throat, and it paralyzed my vocal cord. Oh, my goodness. And they said, you'll never have a voice again. That was in 215. And so I said, no, I will, because I work with people who have cancer and uh, Parkinson's that have no voice. And I said, that's one of my specialties. So as imperfect as I am, I practice what I can as perfectly as I can. That's and, a great message yeah, right there. And now you can hear me. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, three years ago, you couldn't even hear breath sound. And I am now walking without my walker at home. But I take my walker because just to be safe and to carry things, you know, and et cetera. And I can walk up and down the stairs six times, 16 f uh, steps, you know, in one stairway. Oh, my goodness. And that's where I'm at now. And they say, wow, you look great, you know. And so I And I you tell live in San clients, Francisco. That's a walking city. So you have to get yes. around. And yeah. I tell my client, I said, walk. And that's very important. Walking and how you sit and how you stand is very important to, to 
avoid back problems. Okay, I was, I was just going to ask knee, you about that. Pain in the knee, pain in the hip, and etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but to finish my my situation is that in practicing what I preach, I have managed to move through this. So I hope I am a model for people. Yes, and I am. You know how old I am? No, I, I, I never talk about I it. I wanted to before. ask, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to. I, before I got sick, I never did want to talk about it because I work with children. Oh. And they're dear. And as soon as they hear you're over 45, they say, oh, and they start being, you know, midget, you know. <laughs> so, so now I ask everybody, I said, you know how old I am, how young I am? And I'm 85, going on to 86. Oh my goodness! Yes, September That's 28th. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're almost 86. Yes, uh -huh. that is and amazing. So, so let's. You obviously practice these these systems. Let's talk about the posture. Yes. And sitting and back pain. This is a big issue for many, many people. Yes. Myself back, included. Yep, I have back the pain. Knee, those all okay. it's all related. And headaches. So and headaches. it's it's all connected. I have back and pain, so, a lot of back pain, because I sit a yes, lot. <laughs> that's right. And you shouldn't sit for more than one hour without moving and doing a little bit of exercise. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'll do jumping jacks between interviews. Would you like me to describe a little bit yes. about the process? Yes, yeah. please. All right. The first thing, as I said, was talking with you, is that your mind is the most important thing. And so you need to see and feel yourself in the best of health. And so you want to prevent getting back problems, prevent mm. getting knee problems and hip problems, etc. So there's little things that you can do, but it's very difficult for many people because they have to break their train of thought and do that. But I train them to keep their train of thought as they do this as a break and they go back to what they do. So every hour you should get up to do one exercise. And two that I teach them is the part of my whole system of exercises, the warm up and the precious eight exercises that precious I have, yeah I have the video and uh, etc in the book and everything and so um, a lot of people sit like this yes and I think you'll see somebody who's going to be uh, with you and she used to sit like this now she's elegant and so think about my elegant self what is the elegant self is this the elegant self no the elegant self so that the silver thread goes up the tailbone and up to the top of the head, and this is the byway, uh -huh. the center of hundred reason, and that's governing vessel twenty. And you feel this one, and I say, let God take half of your weight because He put you here, right? Uh huh. Or Buddha, or whoever your deity is, and so let me use God, okay? Uh huh. And so, so you feel yourself pulling the, yeah. the spine, suspending, etc. Come on, stay. I yeah. am. I That's am. That's right. Good. This is uh -huh. great. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the thing is, don't stick your head out like this. Shoulders back like this. Many people roll their shoulders forward without knowing. Right. So it hampers the lung from taking yeah. uh, proper breath. Yes. And so, therefore, sitting up straight, and and uh, your head is loose. Yeah, mm -hmm. your head is loose, not like a straight shoulder. And then you breathe from the diaphragm. And because most people breathe like this. Mm -hmm. If you watch now after this show and you'll see people breathing, take a deep breath and they'll go <sighs> like that. That's going into the fight and flight, you know, concept of psychology. And so keep your shoulders still, like a still pond. And here's your xiphoid, which is the breastbone mm -hmm. right here, and then your belly button, the umbilicus, uh -huh. and then your floating ribs here. So you got a triangle here, ah. and that's the diaphragm. So now just keeping that still and just move the diaphragm, close your lip, and your audience can follow too mm -hmm. right now. It's amazing. And so move the diaphragm out, way out like this. And I also, come on, move way out. And I suggest hit it like this. Oh. That's it. And it shouldn't go like this, OK? Yes. It should be hard, just like in martial arts. Oh, my goodness. And then after six times, people, their belly, flabby bellies get very hard. Huh. And we can get them reduce their inches around the waist, too. Oh, my goodness. Half an hour, they lose three inches. And one and a half hour, they lose 12 inches. 
if you have to do it intensely. Right. And I teach people how to do this, not just like Intensify this. Intensify you know? the All right? diaphragm. And so then move it in. When you move this in, breath comes out through your teeth. Slow and move your diaphragm way in and nothing comes out unless you move the diaphragm in. Go right into the spine, come on, way in, and now close your lips and keep your push and move the diaphragm out. And you practice this. You mm -hmm. should do it, practice it three times a day in the beginning. Do it 10 times at least. And you'll find this will tighten up. And you can lose this, you know, roll, right. these rolls. And it's, we've done it time and time and time again. It's really exciting. So we call it natural tummy tucking. Yes. <laughs> also gives you oxygen and energy. Exactly. And the oxygenation, when you move this in, it forces the lung to move up and makes the mm. air to come out. So then when you move it out, it pulls the lung down and you close your lip. So the air is pulled in through your nose, which is the proper way. Because the nose filters the dust and it warms the air to your body temperature, mm. even if it's very cold or very hot. Yes? Mm. But if you do mouth breathing, when it's really hot, your mouth will be scorched. And also you feel you know, the mouth breathing air, you know. It's Not like good, yes. Yucky. Yes, it's yes, yucky, exactly. Yeah. And so this is really amazing. This can help with sciatic pain. I was going to say, pain you're back. Of any yes. sort if you do it properly. And so I have videos that show this, but we have classes that wish the video can help you augment it, you know. And so it's very exciting. People go, oh, wow, I can yes. feel my tummy. I can you see know? that it would definitely help the back as well. Yes. Absolutely. And probably with the posture, too. Yes. Because you're, you're reducing the pressure on your spinal process mm -hmm. and the spinal cord. Okay. Wow, wonderful. I'm actually going to have you take a look here at somebody who Effie Chow is working with. It's absolutely magnificent. Take a look here. Dr. Effie Chow is a world-renowned Qigong Grand Master, energy healer, acupuncturist, author, and international speaker. For over 40 years, Dr. Chow has been working to integrate Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, with Western medicine. Dr. Chow has a PhD in higher education a master's in behavioral science, and is a registered public health and psychiatric nurse. In July of 2000, Dr. Chow was appointed by then-President Bill Clinton to the original 15-member White House Commission on Complementary and Alternative Medicine Policy. The city of San Francisco even declared November 20th through the 26th Qigong Week, with November 22nd specifically designated as Dr. Effie Poi Yu Chow Day. Effie Chow is one of the strongest energy-based healers and acupuncturists I have met, and I have seen with my own eyes some of the remarkable results of her Qigong work. Deepak Chopra, MD. The Chow Qigong Intensive Training Course consists of education in holistic healing, disease prevention, health promotion strategies, stress identification and relaxation techniques, the theories and application of energy systems, touch healing and massage techniques, as well as training in many other areas. The course is currently running at a location near you. For more information or to sign up, contact the East West Academy of Healing Arts through the information listed on your screen. That was amazing. And I understand that you worked with U.S. representatives to legitimize acupuncture treatments for insurance. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Well, you know, insurance only covers medical procedures, mm -hmm. the drug and the surgery and the diagnostic measures, and uh, paid very highly because I understand even chemotherapy, they pay $14,000 to $121,000 a month. To the medical, in okay. The insurance covers that much, mm -hmm. and yet there's question whether it's effective or not, and mm. there's a lot of side effects. And so there is very little insurance cover, if there is any, to the alternatives or the complementary or natural healing. Right. And they said, well, acupuncture is covered, but you know what? They cover acupuncture to a measly maybe 10 to $20 oh. a session and maybe 10 for the whole year. So people's expectations oh. that, well, you should be able to heal me within that time because that's what insurance does. And in essence, the natural healing, acupuncture and Chico, are getting results 
where Western medicine is not is not getting, and so should they be paid so little, and you know, etc. So we have to raise the expectations and the realities of what it is. And so yes, we are right now and have been working at consolidating the natural healers to formulate a system as equal to the medical system and to develop funding, reimbursement, I don't want to call it insurance because there's a lot of bad ideas about insurance. Okay. Uh, not that I have it, but you know, there's a lot of feelings about that. So as for reimbursement for people who will do programs and consultation for keeping themselves well, including nutritional counseling and the exercises and everything, so that right now even $100 out of a person's pocket is yes. too much money. Yes. Right? For, and yes. finance is really getting tough today. Mm -hmm. And so therefore that's what, uh, there's about 40 major institutions that we are working together with legislatures on that possibility. And I'm saying that's that great. by 2023 that we want to have this structure set up and a reimbursement structure set up by 2023. So I welcome you and everybody else yes. to come on board and help make this possible, okay? And How would so, we get involved? Well, you can get in touch with us at okay. East West Academy of Healing Arts and eastwestchi at aol.com. But the, the thing what I'm excited about this is that there's a lot of people you know, excited about it, but yes. we just need a core to really get it facilitated into a, into a structure. I think so too. I'm a huge fan of this to have that reimbursed so more and more people can go towards preventative health rather than sick care. Promoting. We need a health care yes, system and this is how to health. do that. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and we've been educated towards sick care. Even, right. even the National Institutes of Health mm -hmm. of the Department of Health and Human Services, the director whom I knew, uh, the former director, and he said, we should be calling it natural in National Institute of Sickness yeah. instead of health, because they deal with sickness and research into sickness and et cetera. But now it's changing a little bit because they have, and I was part of this development, which I'm happy to be, and yes. a lot of the major administration and policy development is that they do have a, a National Institute now. It used to be already under the president's office, mm -hmm. the director's office, and uh, and it is now called the Nat National Institute for Integrative Health Services. Yes, yes. And it used to be called uh, uh, alternative medicine. So it's, it's integrative, and that's the way yes. of the future of medicine, is exactly. integrative approaches. Yeah. It's however, not us versus them. Yeah, however, it needs to be much more on a prevent health promotion. I don't want to say preventive health because you okay. don't want to prevent health. No, it's health promotion. Right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great point. You've been a pioneer in creating many things. You created an entire, uh, in, in San Francisco, is it the World Tai Chi Day? No, they, uh, well, we will work with Bill Douglas who have uh, developed the World Tai Chi Day, but okay. we, we develop it together. It's a World Congress on Qigong, Tai Chi, TCM, and natural healing. And we're in our 19th year as Bill Douglas, you know, World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. 19th year, and this year we're gonna be back in Japan. And we've been in Rome, we've been in Canada, and of course multiple places in the United States. And the purpose for me to develop that is yes. that we were very isolated and working on our very own, and you know, together we prosper. You know, simply yes. we sink. Yes. And so, and uh, it's so really. So you created funny. a movement. We created a huge movement. Yes, you did. And so there's a there's a uh, camaraderie and support for each other. It's really wonderful. It's great. Take a look at this in action, so you can see what what Effie created. Take a look. <laughs> to come and, uh, and perform. And we want to thank Teddy Fang very much for this privilege of being part of the Asian Heritage Street Celebration with the natural medicine, medicine without drugs. And Tai Chi is known to help with everything. And, and very often, Tai Chi has helped where all else have not helped. It is the first 
in history in San Francisco to have this performance. And it'll be the first of annual activities. And we will have this filled up next year. Here. Well, there are, is somebody that's going to be joining us now. Lisa is going to be joining us, and she is a student of Dr. Effie Chow. And Lisa had stage four cancer, and I will have you listen to her story. She's joining us now. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Well, first, thank you, Lisa, for having me here today, Absolutely. and thank you, Dr. Chow. I'm so delighted to be here. Um, I first met Dr. Chow like 15 years ago. Um, I was interested in learning Qigong, and she was teaching in downtown San Francisco in a building um, in the downtown area, and that's when I met her first. And you and were working at this building? I was not working in that building. I was down the street from her, but that's where she was holding her class. Okay. And then I was, you know, became. I started, you know, doing her system, her Chow Qigong system and became, you know, a rave uh, student of hers, a raving student. Why were you seeking out uh, her work in the first place, or Qigong in the first place? Yeah, at the time I was interested in learning a new um, method, a new method of healing and well-being. I was interested in both meditation and martial arts, and so Qigong is a form of martial art, and I was really drawn to it for that, and drawn to it for all of the healing properties, especially the medical Qigong, which is what she, her system is. And really, at that time, I had no real health health issues at all. I, it was just all I was just drawn to it. And at what point did you start to feel that you had health challenges or get sick? So it was a good ten years after that that um, you know I kind of I was working in high tech, um, the typical career where I'm working all the time, uh, very successful career. I was enjoying my life and everything, but I'm very busy. Uh, I would do the Qigong on and off whenever I could. I traveled a lot for work. It was a very stressful environment. And um, it was, you know, one day I just, dis you know, discovered something was wrong and I went in and had a uh, mammogram and found out that I had breast cancer. My and goodness. so it was like kind of this really uh, big giant halt in the middle of your life. You're, you know, shocking. You're, yes. Yeah, shocking. You're like yeah. moving really fast pace, and then all of a sudden, er, you know, it's like shriek. And uh, at first, I thought, okay, I'll go three weeks out, out of work. Go three weeks out of work. I'll do chemo, whatever, you know, and then I'll be back at work. And then it turned into years. <laughs> and um, wow. And it, what happened was is that well, I reached out to Dr. Chow and she said, you know, now more than ever is time to get back in your Qigong practice and to work with her, you know. And so... Um, now what is the medical system that you are describing that Dr. Chow does? Medical Qigong? Yeah, medical Qigong is just one of sort of the branches of Qigong. And um, it's, as she was talking earlier, focuses a lot on oxygenating the body. Uh -huh. So in the, in the case of cancer, you know, they say cancer doesn't like oxygen. So some of the um, movements in, in that form are more expressive to allow Qigong, or uh, to allow oxygen to, tra to travel in the body. Um, so, Effie, what did you tell her to do? What was one of the first things that you told Lisa to start doing? The first thing I asked her, and with all my clients, is do you want to live? Mm. Or do you want to die? Did you? And the choice, it doesn't matter. I'm neutral. And if they choose to live, we do the best to help them live. And if they want to die, we want to help them die well. Have you had someone say, I want to die? Oh, many. Wow. And then what happened, the reverse psychology is, when they want to die, I say, well, what would you like to really accomplish before you die? Make your list of what you want to do that you've been afraid to do or you haven't had time to do etc. So we have that and we pick the simplest one to move through and they enjoy it and then I say okay where's the second one so we do that and they said hey this is fun <laughs> I was always afraid to do this so they've lived in fear and I'm not saying this in, in Lisa's case but on the whole that we live in fear that we don't recognize that it is fear like fear what other people will say, this is a weird exercise, and et cetera, you know. 
And so we have fun living. And I said, well, you know what? This is living. And you've been afraid to live. And they said, wow, if this is living, then I want to continue doing that. Yes, yes. And so the reverse psychology is that they choose to live. Mm, and they beautiful. are not afraid to live. What was your answer, Lisa? Yeah, so. you know, at that at that time that she said that to me, I had just um, I had graduated. I call it to stage four metastatic cancer, and um, it, it it I was told I had about a two year, three years lifespan given the the kind of cancer that I had and the aggressive pace it was growing. I had broken my back, uh, tumors grew and, and crushed the middle of my back, and um, was going down all the b uh, bones in my back and into my liver, and it was a really you know, rough time, and when she said that, An you know, aggressive it was, yeah, it was very aggressive. And um, when she said that, my first reaction was, I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm sure that's exactly what I'm telling you. Is they're saying I don't have the option to live. You know, they're saying it's incurable, it is terminal. You know, and um, and then I said, you know, wouldn't anyone choose to live in my shoes? You know, and she said, no, not really, Lisa, not really. And then. I said, hmm, okay, I'm gonna think about this then. And, uh, and then it was a process of, uh, of realizing that, you know, as uh, Qigong, as she was saying, is, is more than just the exercises, it's a way of life. And with that way of life, I like to think of it as self-mastery. It's like you're expanding your mindset, uh, the way that you look at things, and, um, and the way that you look at healing. So the entire Western paradigm around me was saying, you're going to die from this. Yes. And you will never be off of chemo the rest of your life. And that's what the statistics show. Yes. Yes. And yes. And you were able to so um, that was the you know so to have that pair and I and I did work with you know chemo and surgery and radiation mm -hmm. and all of that stuff with Dr. Chow because she's a big proponent of integrating. Integrative. It was not yes. about separating and this is bad or that's good or it was about really integrating but really going deep. Right. So as she was also talking about earlier about you don't just pick a couple things here and there, you go deep. So, um, you know, luckily I had her practice of the Qigong exercises already understood. Then I um, expanded to more of the, the, the way that you look at things. You know, one great example she mentioned earlier is that it's not a fight. You know, and so what I say to people is not a fight. It's a it's a love harder. You know, so uh -huh. one of the. Um, one of the popular campaigns out there with breast cancer um, is crush it, you know, um, and although I get where it's coming from, yeah. it's supposed to be an empowering message, um, be strong and be empowered, and, and that is a very good part of the message. But the, the nuanced undertone to that message is that you have to crush it, that you have to fight it, that you have to get real strong, that you have to get real mean and get real, you know, whatever. And that's the opposite. You have to love it. You have to, and it may sound really weird to say that because one of the, like, crises of our time is that we don't know how to love ourselves. We don't even know how to like ourselves. Much less love your cancer. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you know, it's about, you know, I mean, I had a huge, even before I became stage four metastatic, I like the cancer, uh, the, sorry, the chemo made me lose my short-term memory completely. Mm. And I couldn't do basic things. And I had used to run these huge projects in engineering before that. And I was like, who am I? Who am I? Without that. I had this huge identity crisis. You know, who am I? And, and why does it matter? And it was this huge, deep interest, you know, thing about, and I just discovered, you know what? You are enough already. Mm. And there's nothing you need to do to prove. Yes. And once you can really, really taste that there is nothing you need to do to prove your value, your whole world transforms. <laughs> I mean, like, really, like, this is what I talk about in my book is like total self liberation, like liberation of the utmost kind, right? Yes. And then you start to learn that everything else that isn't about learning about yourself is just a distraction to learning about yourself. Would you say that 100% of your life before that moment was about external living? Not a hundred percent, not a hundred percent, but I was, um, I, and I was always very open sort of spiritually as well. Like, so one of the things that Dr. Chow taught a lot about, you know, healing is, a, is I look at it as a pie, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And I always thought, okay, well, I, you know, I'm spiritual enough, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. Interesting. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. And then it's like, you kind of see this whole, again, when you're sitting there and you're dying, 
you see that in a whole different way, you know? And um, you're like, wow, there is a whole other spiritual expansion I can do that is not religious, you know? Right. And, it, and it's, it's hard to talk about people who get very scared with that word, you know, yeah. or, or turned off or whatever, but it's really about like loving yourself more. Yeah. And, you know, so finding those ways to do the things that make you healthy, you know? And I think people get confused, well, what does it mean to love myself, you know? Am I supposed to hug myself or something? Oh, right. You know? But what I discovered is that it is about more than anything else, I think, truly, is removing the things that aren't working for you, letting go. You know, it is, it is facing those things that are your self-sabotage behaviors kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What if you looked at it and said, that's actually a self-betrayal? And it just changes the whole thing. So what did you let go of? Oh, well, I let go of working too hard, thinking career was everything. Mm -hmm. I let go of, yeah, that, that's um, so much. Um, then certain behaviors, you know, behaviors that were not as healthy, you know, maybe not eating as healthy or, um, gosh, let not go feeling of that you're all lovable. social media. Oh, you <laughs> I did. let go of all social I mean, <laughs> you know, because it just at the end of the day, for me anyway, it didn't make me feel good, right? It's a bit of this process of comparison and seeing what others are. It's like not a, pro you know, it doesn't make you feel good. So one of the, one of the, like the litmus tests that I have is, to understand if something's good for me or not is simply to say, does it feel good <laughs> or does it not feel good? Yes. Does it come from love or does it come from fear? So in addition to doing the, the conventional treatments around cancer, you shifted and changed your entire mindset. Did you go yes. back to work? No. No. Yeah. So not yet anyway. Yeah. Um, so How this is a is process that has been going on for many years now. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, I'm in remission now and it's been a couple of years, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still, I am still receive treatment and I'm still on a, like what I call chemo light version uh -huh. that I will be um, getting off of very shortly. But you know, it's kind of, it's one of those things you're like, well, I don't want to really rock the boat. I'm doing really well. <laughs> yes. But at the yes. same time, uh, so much of the healing was really um, like an epiphany and an expansion of myself and, and, and loving myself. And there was, you know, there was one day there was a moment where I was just like, I know I'm going to heal. And then, you know, a week later we did these tests and my pathology had changed. And it's like, mm, you know, was that divine intervention? Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> changed in a <laughs> positive happened, way. You know, so you really it, it felt changed that. changed in a positive mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Now, how has your life changed since then? And in terms of, did you get married? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I did. I got married, and um, it was at the time. Um, at the time, we had been we were dating, but uh, my my partner lived in another country in Cuba, which has, of course, lots of restrictions with the U.S. and he couldn't come here. He couldn't even come here for a visit, mm. um, much less come here to, you know, on a fiance visa or whatever. And so that um, that took a really long time and a lot of Dr. Chow's encouragement and love and blessing to get through. When you know, at that time, the the, the immigration agent told him, you know, he just like we had this whole book of discovery. They call it like this uh, evidence of a relationship kind of thing. You submit pictures and you know receipts, whatever you you have to provide evidence of a relationship wow. to the embassy or to, yeah, to the immigration. We had this huge book, okay? And the guy said, I don't need to look at this book. He says, I'm looking here and uh, she's just gonna die anyway. So no, you're denied. And I was like, you know, he called me, he said that. I was like, no way, I'm gonna talk to my lawyer about this. And yes. it was this thing she couldn't get through either because you know, once the decision is made, the decision is made. And oh I was devastated. Goodness. And I thought, you know, the one shiny thing going on in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was really shortly after the tumor had broken my spine. And I was in a lot of physical pain, we're in a tremendous pain. And I couldn't do things like lift my groceries. And that was, you know, embarrassing too. Yes. You know, something you have to You kinda, needed help yeah, too. I need, yeah, exactly. Yes. And so, and, and Dr. Chow was like, well, what else have you done? And I'm like, what else can I do, you know? And uh, so she suggested reaching out to one of the, our Congress people and, um, and that's what I did. And initially, it, well, they didn't accept to work with me right away, but I made it like a road in and I said, if I have trouble doing this next round, 
will you step in for me? And eventually I had trouble doing the next round and they did step in for me. So you stuck with it. I stuck with it mm -hmm. and I did it again. And I did the whole process the second time. That is incredible. So you not only did you go through obstacles yes. with this process and you were fighting, not fighting, but you were loving cancer at the same <laughs> time. You managed to, now you're happily married and both living here in the U.S. Yes. That's yes. incredible. Mm -hmm. What a story and I'm so Sweet. proud of you. Thank you. And you're writing a book about this experience? Yes, I am. That's great. Called Cosmic Grace. Cosmic and, Grace. Um, yeah, it's about really kind of that liberation, that aliveness, that when you come to find, and I often say, like, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, it takes, like, facing death to, to come to find that you're alive in this moment. And in this moment, irregardless of your experience or your circumstance, you are totally free and alive. And do you know that? And do you feel it? And are you feeling the joy that comes with that? And even with the suffering, because there was a lot of suffering with a broken back. And, and Dr. Chow prescribed me with four baths a day of Epsom salt, you know. And at first, there was a period when I was just so sad that I laid there and I was looked at the ceiling. I was like, I can't believe this is my life. Mm -hmm. I used to be running around at work, making things happen, da da da. And here I am taking a bath in the middle of the day. And then until it dawned on me, you know, like this whole other, like there can be a purpose in our healing too and, um, and in our suffering. Mm -hmm. And I thought, gosh, you know what, we're constantly missing the opportunity for aliveness by looking at all suffering as bad. Yes, yes, absolutely. And so you embraced it and have done a lot of work. And I love your story because you don't have to go through cancer in order to adopt this perspective and to also bring Qigong into your life to move the energy and to oxygenate your healing. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, so exactly. thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you have, you've taught her to continue yes. this work on, to continue this is a life's work. It's a, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yes. it's a lifestyle. It and is. may I just do one quick demonstration sure. of what she said about loving her cancer versus fighting her cancer. Mm -hmm. And this is the energy test which shows what happens to your body yes. and your immune system. Yes. So may I yes. practice with you? Yes. You don't have to stand. Just put up your arms like okay. this. Up like this. Okay. And I'm going to test how strong you are. Okay. okay? And your natural strength. So you're strong. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. And now you're gonna say, you're gonna say I'm gonna fight my cancer. Okay. Okay. You say I'm that. gonna fight my cancer. All right. Okay. And resist. Fight my Doesn't take much. Oh my goodness. And no. let me demonstrate on her too. Okay. Up with your arm. And see what you've done is weaken yourself and your immune system. And so now say I'm gonna love my cancer. I'm gonna love to wellness. Cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love my cancer and to she, wellness. She said it. Okay. okay. And so what I'm saying is I'm going to love my cancer. And look at your my immune goodness. system is yeah. higher and your energy is higher. You're psychologically, you feel better. Yes. So therefore, there's more chance of healing than not. Yes. If the other way, there's no chance of healing. Right. Yeah, and look, let me test yeah, you. Yeah, and now. how, how and even see. just I affected you. And you right? see. Because our energy, I'm the one who said it. Yes. And it affected exactly. your energy. That and is so, fascinating. And in quantum yes. physics, we talked about that we affect everybody and everything so that you could affect the whole world by what you're saying. Fascinating. And by your attitude to your own healing. That was incredible how Lisa impacted the field, even with her saying that and it changing my energy. It really shows how we impact other people's energy. There is someone else who Dr. Chow worked with, Betty, and Betty improved her eyesight using Qigong. Welcome, Betty. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lisa. Tell Thank you, Dr. Chow. So tell me about how you improved your eyesight. Well, do, uh, that's a common condition yes. for many people and I'm a real estate broker. So I have to read a lot of documents for work every day, and I had to wear uh, readers. Yes. And then Dr. Chow taught me how to do eye massage. So just demonstrating a little bit, and, um, and in a short time, I was able to see much clearer 
and without my glasses. So these are massages above the eyes and below yes. the eyes? Yes, that's correct. And uh, she has a video too of how uh, that is demonstrated. And um, now the video can be found at on the website, right? So they can write to East West Academy of Healing Arts or East West Chi, East West QI at AOL.com. Okay. And request for And it. request about the eye massages because that's very important. Eyesight starts to go after 40. Yes. And so you improve the oxygen, I guess, around your eyesight, yes? Uh, yes, and so I could see brighter hmm. and wider too. In just a very short time with Dr. Chow's eye massage, and I want to give you a brief demonstration. Okay. So, this is a Chow Medical Qigong Intensive Training Level 1 Manual. And before it would be blurry for me to read it. And now I, I'll just read a short paragraph so I can read it without my glasses. Qigong Grandmaster, Dr. Effie Chow, this Chow Medical Qigong Intensive Training Program is an integral component of a more extensive four level training course that's amazing and a part of <laughs> the chow system great that's wonderful and i think it's in uh, 10. it's in uh, a font. 10 font yes ten font. yes um, that's no that's fantastic i can barely read that which, it's <laughs> very blurry to me so and i have to do some of your eye exercises dr chow yes, well, thank too. you so much for sharing that with us so these are it's a process of going above the eyes and below below the eyes and where else? Um, massaging the inner corner, not the tear duct, nor mm -hmm. the eye, and then coming down like about three times. The nose makes a difference, Dr. Chow, on the eyes? Well, the thing is, eye, ear, nose, and throat, as in Western medicine, is all connected together. Ah. So therefore, working with the eye is, but is a little bit more than the simple mm -hmm. thing that she's mm -hmm. giving. So it's around. And then here is the eye, uh, the tear duct right mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So it helps to open the circulation and so that the water can get... Uh, uh, Hydrate the eyes. Yeah, mm. And so therefore coming down here, you're already affecting the nasal passageway. Mm -hmm. And this flare, and then this is a sinus point right up here. My goodness. That it's very painful sometimes yes. if you put it, put your hands on there. Right oh. in the center of the eye here. Uh -huh. You feel it? Yes. It's a tender spot. And then you rub your logong point, which is the uh, energetic point, the critical point, I'm saying. And you place it on the temple and rubbing it on the temple. So I teach them to do it themselves. And so it's just like that. And about a, 10 times, uh, there's specifics on yes. this. I'm just very quickly. And then she rubs it and put it over her eyes for about a minute. And so it all takes about six minutes to do this, even less. And you do it twice a day or several you times a day? Well, if it's uh, new, I would say three times a day. Okay. But we get results immediately. Like when I demonstrate, the person really gets the results immediately. Fantastic. Yeah, clearer and brighter, and well, uh, et cetera. But thank her you. posture is something that's very important. She used to. Slump yes. Like oh my goodness. <laughs> and many people slump she, over their computer. Yes. Right? That's right. Yes. And look at her. She's so elegant yes. and gracious and so majestic. And well, that helps you walk better too. Yes. And so it helps everything. Yes. Well, thank you so much yes. for sharing this with us. And thank you so much, Dr. Chow. You are an amazing example of what is possible in the human being. Well, I think what is possible is mm -hmm. the power of God and for me is Buddha as well. So whatever your deity, please know that you are the greatest catalyst for that ultimate power. And this is where the power comes in. It's not from ourselves. Yeah. And you must honor that because uh, the ego enters in when you say, oh, I healed you. I didn't do anything. I just facilitated right. that God's energy. And I like to give a, my signature prescription. Okay, we'll close with that. Yes. <laughs> yes. What is that? And well, since 1960s, I prescribe eight at least every day, at least eight 
heart to heart, F-E Chow, heart to heart hug, and it's this way. Okay. That's right, what? this way, <laughs> not this okay. way, okay, this way. And eight, at least, heart to heart, F-E Chow hug, and three big belly aching laughs. You know how you ache so much you can't straighten up, you know? And now, there's theory behind this. I just want to briefly say one sentence on that, is that when you laugh, you open the heart energy. And the laughter is the sound of the heart. And children know how to make you laugh when you're angry, if you have children They sure you. do, they when sure do. When you're angry, they start to do little antics and you start, start like this. They know they got you and they may do it some more. You go, ah, and you forget that you're angry at them. Yes. The children just intimately know. So I prescribe, everybody try it. And also, if there's no one, Hug yourself. Oh. Everybody hug yourself. Yes, that's Come a good on. idea. And well, I hope all of us <laughs> looking, watching, will just give yourself a hug and say, yes. I love me. And I love I you both. Love and thank you so much for joining me today. You. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. And thank You're you so wonderful. much for being a part of this and for watching the show. Yes. And until next time, if you would like to watch any one of these great inspirational interviews, you can watch them right here on Free Speech TV. Or you could go to theawareshow.com. I am Lisa Gar, and until next time, I invite you to stay aware.